There he is. I'm going to try something a little bit different this week, and so everybody can share this. The uh, the Twitter spaces that I was uh, migrating uh, to YouTube um, were not forgotten. The Twitter spaces themselves are limited, meaning that, um, like how uh, Crypto Sherpa does it, um, he has to record it from the Twitter stream itself. The way that X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it at this moment in time, uh, is set up, you can no longer download directly from the link. So I was using a tool to download the whole entire stream and then convert that to uh, YouTube. Well, that no longer works because you have to pay for a service to be able to click and connect. And uh, and I don't have that. So um, and I'm not going to pay for that. So I'm going to try to record uh, manually to an SD card at this moment in time. And I know Sherpa will do his own thing. I'm just going to record the raw and uh, we'll work together. And hopefully I can get this one up on Twitter in the next week or so. So before the next spaces, I just want to let you guys know that nothing was forgotten. It's just that uh, X has um, made it quite difficult to export uh, Twitter spaces. You have to be online to listen to it. So, all right, that's all I want to say. Let me push my record. Wonderful. Thank you, boys. Let's kick off with the three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the DB Spaces on a lovely Friday. Um, thanks for taking the time out uh, to join us. We've got a lot to cover today. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot of updates that's coming up to DeFi. And then also we're going to have an update on uh, the DB mobile wallet and wallet side of things. And of course, you know, we'd love to have any questions from you guys. So, you know, do raise your hands and I'll let you in. And in the meantime, when we are talking, like do hit those reactions. So, we know, if you guys like it, you know, if you've got any questions and stuff like that. So, without further ado, voice, I'll hand over to you for a quick update. Absolutely. Um, well, we're still in the middle of migration. Uh, we got a lot of community members who just received um, some reminders that uh, we have migrated from the version two of Divi's blockchain to version three. So about, uh, you know, a couple hundred people who hadn't updated yet just got a, a little reminder from me um, generated. It'll come from uh, the support portal. So when you see that, you'll know what it is. Obviously, uh, for security purposes, uh, if you wanted to validate that email, which I would encourage you to do, is very simply just log into supports.dibbyproject.org. Use your email that you received uh, for you received that message from to uh, log into your account there. In fact, that's how the portal is set up. It's set up to keep you safe and secure. If you log into that, you'll be able to see your message right there and you'll be able to validate that so that makes you that helps keep you safe so uh we're still at about uh, i think um maybe rob might have seen this i don't know if uh, anybody else has but we're uh we're guesstimating it's about an 85 percent migration so far so we have quite a few laggards um that uh, haven't updated uh we have some users who did get some of the messages who have some uh, deprecated applications that in some cases are as old as three, three and a half years ago. So they have some very, very old versions. And uh, as always, uh, Gary or I or Neeks, if you're in Discord, we will help you update those applications. There are going to be some hurdles when you are so old on those applications. Windows is going to be a little bit different than Mac will be. And of course, the same thing with your Linux users. Um, so each one will have a little bit different process and flow, but it's it's pretty easy. We'll help you with that. Don't worry about anything. Don't fret. Um, we'll help you. So we're still going through. We're still moving towards that state of where we have a, a, a 95 plus percent migration. So we probably have a few weeks still ahead of us. Um, I want to update you on the mobile wallet. Um, I was updated by the mobile wallet team that they have identified the uh, bug that has caused the uh, display and sync issue on the mobile wallet. Um, they had just recently did a massive update on the back end cache and refreshing that cache and some upgrades there. And then very shortly afterwards, uh, 
as you may know, they use a lot of the open source technology that they vet and then use. Uh, but one of those libraries, it looks to be had to be updated again. And, uh, and they've identified that. So we'll see a rollout, I would expect, somewhat very soon for that. And that will help. So, And that's all I have for you. If you have anything else you want to add, anybody else on top of that? Um, I will just talk about the uh, need to upgrade and follow and uh, keep a track as a reminder to keep track of all your investments, not just Diddy. Projects change. Um, and I am absolutely a, uh, you know, one of the, one of the people who have also fallen, I can use the word victim. It's my fault for not uh, following up with some of my other projects that I, that I'm involved with um, because it's easy to kind of like focus on one and then go back and realize that, oh, you know, a couple months passed and you go look at some other projects, how's that doing? <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, yeah. I totally missed this upgrade. Like, or yeah. I totally forgot that we have to change, the, you know, from one platform to another. Um, and, uh, you know, like with Vivi, it's not a matter of lost funds. It's a matter of lost opportunity. Um, yes. And that's, you know, it sucks. Uh, it sucks if you don't keep up and then you find out that everybody uh, has moved on past you <laughs> uh, and you've gotten maybe what we might call fake rewards. I mean, they're not fake. They're just not the right chain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. So so it's not just Divi. Um, all, you know, if you've got a piece of land that you don't visit every day, you want to make sure somebody's not dumping on it. Um, you want to make sure the weeds maybe haven't taken over. You want to make sure, I mean, like, you got to check. You got to check your investments. Um, that he's no different. And, um, so this is just a plea from me to you, uh, to just check in, you know, we, we, we write these, we write these blog posts, uh, to help pe keep people informed on what we're doing, why we're doing it, what the benefits are, um, and how to do it. And, um, yeah. just keep in, keep in all your investments. Keep, uh, keep yourself yeah, up to date. I, I'll add to I'll add to that. Um, most of you know that um, uh, as I became involved with Divi, um, volunteering my time in Divi in the early days uh, for several years, I was also volunteering time in other crypto communities or working in other crypto communities. And um, I have other coins, just like uh, you know Rob was mentioning. And I had a project that I was following all the way from 2016, maybe. And, uh, and I just inspected that uh, node about a, a year ago, and I was so forked because I was so many versions behind. Just granted, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. Um, what did I lose? I lost opportunity, right? So it had mined blocks that were on a, on a very old blockchain that had no value. And, uh, and it's a business, right? So I guess if I'm supporting the blockchain, it's my diligence as a as a business owner to make sure I inspect my business, make sure it's running to uh, to capacity. Um, obviously, I'm going to pay more attention to the ones that uh, provide me more resources. Obviously, yeah. but it's exactly that. If, if you have a piece of property and it's overgrown, yeah, people are going to dump on it. So. <laughs> All right, different uh, yeah, the businesses you've got the best support around. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I will help. Whatever you need, I will help always. Absolutely. Thank you, boys. Um, yeah, if anybody's got any questions, do throw your hands up. But in the meantime, let me welcome Josh and Nick. Hey, guys. Yeah, how are you all doing? Hey, hey, how's it going? All good, thank you. How are you? Doing fantastic. Excited to push this update to production. That's awesome. We are very excited to hear about um, all the DeFi updates. Um, so Nick, I don't know if you managed to get in. Hey guys, what's hey going on? Yeah, I'm good. Hope you guys are all doing well. Very good, thank you. Great to have you on board as well. The whole team's here. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like give us a bit of background noise. The heads up, if you want to. There it is. Is he on the bar again? <laughs> I wish I was. I'm, I'm standing outside a cafe. <laughs> um, I, look, I don't want to. I don't want to detract from the major DeFi updates that Josh is going to be speaking about. Just wanted to pop in and say hello. Um, really, 
I'm really excited actually right now because the team this just literally just over the past couple of weeks as you said before I um, as voice your your feedback as well. Um, Hey boys. Boys, you're killing it, everyone. <laughs> we love your voice, but not your background. Anyway, uh, yeah, anyway, the, the team has gotten the, the wallet to a point now. Um, actually, all the infrastructure upgrades uh, that, that everyone has participated in. And, and I know Rob was just saying, don't forget to upgrade your, you know, your nodes and your wallets. But um, thanks to all of that, very, very challenging work. The the actual company <laughs> that runs this this wallet is at the point now where the the tools, the infrastructure, the products um, are at a break even, are on track to have a break even burn rate, which is huge. Uh, very, very exciting moment for the team because for a long time over the past, sheesh, I don't know while <laughs> pretty much since the bear started just like uh, cratering everything um you know we're, we're at a negative burn rate which is difficult to run and operate especially when the price is going down the treasury is receiving less uh at, at least in terms of a dollar value of course we're also receiving less divvy as a result of the changes in the block reward schedule which are of course planned but um yeah i mean it's you know, it was just all poor timing, but we were able to get to a point now where everything is running and we're on track to see that uh, break even burn rate. The next step, of course, being profitability, which is, in my opinion, probably one of the more paramount aspects to success moving forward into the next phase, next, you know, two years of, of this market. Um, we're starting to see projects all over the space attempting and we've always seen i guess projects attempting to build real businesses out of their projects um we're not any different in that regard and getting to a point where we're seeing success that's very promising to me uh should be promising to everyone on board with us uh and, and the effects of these things are not necessarily instant right just because the business is profitable doesn't mean it, it trickles down the funnel right away um but it is part of that funnel and renuke you could probably speak to that better than i could but point being this was a big monumental moment for the team it may not be obvious to everyone listening and i just wanted to point that out so that it is obvious so congrats to everyone thank you guys for all your hard work awesome thank you so much yeah that's, that's really exciting time for him um Right, Josh, I think over to you. We've got loads to get through. Yeah, we do. Um, I'll try to keep, be a little bit succinct because there's so much to cover. So as far as the D5 protocol goes, we've got a couple updates regarding UI, regarding the, uh, the backend infrastructure. As some of you guys know, the farm um, for a little bit was having issues with the display for the dashboard that shows the rewards. We're able to patch those fixes in this past month. So everybody should be able to see their rewards or APR. Um, I know we were having some issues on mobile. Folks were not able to do their farming on mobile. That's fixed. So if you go on MetaMask mobile, everything's working on there as well. Um, and then the biggest update regarding farms is that we are moving to a completely new mechanism for reward distribution. Um, traditionally, the way that our farm worked is you stake LP tokens, right? Which is just a marker of your liquidity position when you provide liquidity for the uh, Divi Ethereum pair. And traditionally you would stake that LP, that LP would go into a vault that's generated specifically for you. Uh, it's your own vault. The big problem that we were having that folks were giving us feedback about is that the gas fees are really high on Ethereum. And so every time that somebody would have to do their first stake, they would have to generate a vault, which is an ERC721, essentially an NFT. It's a very expensive transaction on the blockchain. And so folks were spending quite a bit on gas just to be able to stake their LP tokens. And then after that, to claim their rewards and unstake their LP tokens, they were also having to spend quite a bit of gas on that transaction. So round trip, in and out of the stake, it was quite costly. And we heard that feedback right away. 
we understood that there were some issues um, with Magic Link users not being able to do the um, the contract signature or the hash creation that's necessary um, for that specific type of transaction for the staking transaction. And so we decided to completely overhaul the farm. We built a new contract. That contract uses the exact same rewards calculation logic as the original contract did, meaning your percent of rewards are based on how much of all LP tokens you are that are staked and how long you've been staking, right? You've been staking 50% of the LP tokens staked for 50% of the time, or let's say 100% of the time, you would get 50% of the rewards over that staking uh, staking period, which, so everyone knows, staking periods are now once every week, so airdrops come on a weekly basis. Uh, we thought about doing it on a monthly basis, but we wanted to do it as frequently as possible so everybody would have their rewards quickly. Um, we optimized gas, so now you guys don't have to spend any gas to get your rewards. Um, if you provide liquidity for the Divi Ethereum pair on Uniswap V2 or just through our protocol, right? If you just do it through the Divi DeFi site and you have LP tokens in your wallet, you are going to be receiving rewards airdrops, right? Now you're probably wondering, how do I know what rewards I'm going to get, right? Like, how do I know how much I've received? The current farm dashboard is currently being um, redeveloped. So it will show you the rewards that you're going to be receiving during the next airdrop that basically you've earned up to that point and you receive when the airdrop happens at the end of the week. So that's all ready to go to production. Um, the, the farm contract, all that stuff, all the back end is finished. That's all in production, right? It's been in production since, um, the 27th and the UI is what we're pushing out this week. Um, I'm pretty active in the uh, Divi Discord DeFi channel. Um, so if anybody has any questions, like needs any help whatsoever, feel free to address me in there and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, that's pretty much it from the DeFi standpoint. Um, one other thing that I really want to communicate to the community while we're on here is that, you know, this is a product that we basically, you know, created to benefit the community. Um, this is not a Josh product. It's not a DeFi or an innovations team product, like this is just a Divi project product that ideally we want to benefit everybody who's a Divi holder um, and who supports Divi. And so, you know, part of the long-term mission for this product was that we were gonna take the fees generated within it and create a community fund, right? And that goes really well hand in hand with the DAO because the DAO will essentially allow governance to take place for the funds that are in the DAO, or excuse me, that are in the community fund. Um, so you guys know the Divi DeFi protocol site has a, a small proxy fee. Anytime you execute a trade, there's a 1% fee on it. That's it. Um, that 1% fee um, basically helps the fund development, helps the fund the updates. It hasn't really funded too much at this point. Um, it's generated a little bit of Ethereum that we use to deploy these new contracts as we make updates. Um, so unfortunately it's not <laughs> quite as far along as the wallet is when it comes to, you know, making revenue or breaking even, but it does kind of help offset the cost because we do spend a lot of gas personally on developing these new contracts and testing them. So it does contribute positively toward us as, as we, you know, volunteer our effort and resource. So uh, if you guys want to support, Right, we would really appreciate it if you would drive your friends to the DeFi site, have them execute their trades there. Um, you know, ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to tie the community fund directly to the DAO. Any any initiatives, any proposals that people have, you know, you're going to be able to uh, leverage that community fund for you know whatever kind of things you want to do. If you want to bring in something new to the DeFi protocol, something fun and creative. Um, that, that community treasury fund will be there. Um, right now, like I said, there's not really anything being generated at the moment. It's pretty, pretty small. It's pretty negligible amounts of ETH. Um, one thing that we really would like to do with community um, treasury is we'd like to overhaul the chart. Um, I know you guys have probably heard me get on my soapbox and talk about this, but Uniswap has really been punishing V2 uh, liquidity pairs because they want to force everybody into Uniswap V3. 
So one of the things that came as a result of them trying to deprecate all of V2 is that um, we no longer have charting, right? Our, we're not having price indexed on the chart on Uniswap. And therefore, we're not having price indexing or charting on our website. We would like to ideally create just our own charting using our own data. Um, but we need to get some budgets put together for that. As, as always, everything's a function of budget. So whatever you guys can do to support the DeFi protocol, uh, you know, driving trade there, getting your friends to use it would really help. I mean, over time, the goal long term is to create a referral system. So any trades that you drive to the protocol, it's your earning fees. Um, we've already built a proof of concept for this um, in another project that I worked on. So we already have this technology. We have a referral oracle. It's just going to take some work because you know, developing something is not enough. You also have to do a lot of QA. You have to test it, do some pen testing, make sure that the implementation is secure. Um, I mean, it, it, you know, Lord knows it took super long for us to get to this point because we went through so many different implementations of getting Divi on Ethereum and until we could finally get to this point. You know, thanks to the Oracle that voice led, um, now we have something that has a really solid communication between the Divi layer one chain and Ethereum. So, you know, we're in really good shape there. We want to make sure that we take the time to actually do quality testing um, and assurance on the new stuff that we're rolling out. But a referral system would be exciting. It would basically immediately let everybody share the rewards that are generated through uh, through the activity on the protocol. So that's sort of long-term mission. A lot of folks ask about Polygon. So I want to like address it here while we're on. Polygon is live. Polygon has been live for months. There is a Divi on Polygon. All you have to do is switch the network on the protocol. In the top right, there's a little Ethereum button. You click on it and you just, when it drops down, click the Polygon button. Then it'll switch to Polygon. Um, there's a very small amount of liquidity on Matic, right? We haven't really spent a lot of effort and resources on, on making that ecosystem thrive yet because it was easier to start everything on Ethereum. And strategically, it made more sense to have everything on ETH. Over time, we're going to try and improve things on there. One of the things that currently exists on Polygon that does not exist on, um, on Ethereum is we have gasless transactions for ERC-20s on Polygon. So when you do your final confirmation on the trade, you're going to be able to do that gasless. It's not a massive impact necessarily just because I know Polygon's already so cheap as it is, but it's a great proof of concept for us to migrate that technology over to Ethereum. If we do it on ETH, we're going to have to get creative, batch processing transactions, um, making sure that like gas is really, really optimized because it is very expensive to, to do any transaction or pay for it on Ethereum. So there's a, a fair bit of infrastructure that needs to be built before we can do gasless on ETH and before we can have the referral system in place. So that's what's on the agenda for the future. This week, we are going to be pushing the new UI updates. Um, I'm going to be, you know, blasting it in the Discord. You know, we'll tweet it out from the Divi Disc, uh, the Divi Twitter as well, so you guys can see when the new updates are live on the front end. And from now on, all you got to do is provide liquidity, and you're going to get showered with LP rewards. Um, it's funny, someone I don't know who it was created this really awesome comparison between the Layer One rewards and the Divi DeFi rewards. I think. Um, I don't know, it was like a 10x difference, 10 times higher on the DeFi side. Not that I'm encouraging people to do that necessarily. There's just, there's a lot of rewards there right now. So don't feel like you're too late. If you had an interest in, in participating in the DeFi farm and you wanted to provide liquidity, but you're like, oh, shucks, like it's too late. It's not. Um, I think the APR there is like over 170% right now. Um, so there's still plenty of room for other people to participate. Um, and I would encourage people to engage still on the layer one, right? You know, that's what actually secures the blockchain. So, you know, just because the rewards are great on DeFi side, don't, you know, don't forget that real mining, real staking actually takes place on layer one, not on the DeFi part. So um, that's all I've got as far as updates. I'm going to go ahead and open the floor to any questions that people have. That's great. Thank you so much, Josh. Uh, let's give a couple of minutes to see if anybody has any questions. Um, Why is Rob? Do you guys have any questions? Are you guys doing good? Or anything yeah. to add? 
Chris, what's the best way for somebody who is uh, not necessarily DeFi oriented to go from not using a farm to using the farms? Well, I think now the new implementation, you don't really have to do anything to participate in the farm other than provide liquidity. And the best place to do that, because Uniswap's website is really confusing. It's like it's like a it's like a circus, like Madhouse. Um, if you just go to our uh, DeFi dot uh, XYZ, or I forget which domain it is right now, but if you just go to the DeFi site, we'll post it. Um, and you go to liquidity. All you got to do is select Divi and Ethereum. We actually done Rob, like we've done custom logic, so that um, you can't mess up the ratios when you do your Divi and ETH pairs. It's something that Uniswap doesn't do, but it's really helpful for beginners because you always have to have a similar dollar, like you have to have an equal dollar worth of Divi and an equal dollar worth of Ethereum that, that you provide liquidity for. Um, we actually custom bake that into the logic. So you just put Divi and you know you hit 25% or you hit 50% of your Divi, it automatically populates that number of Ethereum um, and vice versa. So it's, mm -hmm. it's so, so, so easy. It's easier than Uniswap is. Like, And I have never seen this on any other site where you could provide liquidity easier than ours. Um, but that's all you have to do, Rob. Just go to the DeFi site, go to liquidity, put in Divi Need, and then just click add liquidity from there, and then confirm it in your MetaMask. Cool. What's the best way for people to get the, uh, the Ethereum or Polygon um, Divi? Oh, great question. Um, there, there's two ways you can go about it. Change now um, has a swapping mechanism that will allow you to go from the layer one Divi and swap and exchange it for the layer two Divi, the ERC20 Divi. That's one mechanism. Obviously, there's a little bit of fees for gas and stuff like that. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend it if you're only doing like 50 bucks or 100 bucks. I would encourage you to do at least $100 or more. Not because I care, but because it's, you know, it's negligible compared to the fees. So you want to make sure that that's working out. The other way, which is really simple, is just take them and swap it for Divi on the DeFi site. That's the easiest way. Thanks. Yeah. I'm trying to think of another uh, like beginner question, but I think those are the two big ones. Yeah, it's pretty easy now. All you got to do is take your Ethereum, go to the DeFi site, swap it, and you're set. Nice. I, hey, I do have another question. So it sounds like an amazing amount of progress has happened actually since since the struggles we had early on um, right. that were so so frustrating. Um, so what's it looking like from here? We have uh, aside for aside from you know improvements and stability and that kind of stuff. But like, what uh, what do you think uh, we might see next? I think the the biggest impact that we could have is creating a referral system. Um, and essentially the way the referral system would work, just so everyone understands, what we would do is we would just allow people to attach their Web3 address at the end of the URL string. Our server would extract that, the Oracle would read it, and a portion of the fees generated from a trade that uses that URL would go to that referrer. So what's really cool about that is like anybody can have a referral code. Just throw in your address at the end of the URL string, and you'll be paid. Cool. Like that's amazing. Um, that's super simple. I've I've never seen. I mean, I've actually built this like the proof of concept with our team, like on three other projects so far. It's been really successful because people are like, okay, let me just use the website, throw my address at the end, and then I'm good to go. Um, the only thing that we would have to do that I would think require like some some budget is we have to create some sort of a dashboard for folks to see the referral rewards um yeah. so that's so really that's, cool. that's, that's like true web three kind of referrals you don't need any id there's no there's no yeah, signing there's up none. for something there's it's no just, registration just toss your address in the mix yeah, yeah. that's a pretty cool idea mm -hmm. that's really i think that'll be high impact for her for the protocol because now it's like you have a reason it's not just because you're doing it to be you know benevolent you're just you're trying to earn fees right yeah. um the other thing that i would want to do um is create cookies tracking 
So if, let's say, for example, like I was to promote my referral link for the DeFi site, we would have cookies attached to it so that um, even if somebody were to come back to the DeFi site without the referral link, that referrer would still get paid out on all, mm. all, all transactions from that individual. So, and it's not like the trades are any more expensive for that individual, right? It's not coming out of that. Like, it's not an additional fee coming from them. It's actually a fee that's being partitioned from just the regular trading fee that the protocol already has today. So, um, so it doesn't, you know, it's not hurting that individual in their trade any more than it would for them just to do a trade without a referral link. So, nice. yeah, that, I think that's really for, at least in my mind, that's like number one priority on the agenda so that people can start promoting this properly. And then we can start generating fees and start overhauling the front end and fixing stuff up. That's cool. Do you have a, and if we don't, maybe we should write one. Uh, do you have like a blog post like that really highlight, like you've mentioned, I think two or three things that are just not out there that are on this. Um, yeah, no, I just thought of them. <laughs> I just okay. thought of them like the other night. I just thought of them like two nights ago. I was like, oh, wait, we're, we're, I've already built this tech and other, for other clients. Like I should just do that here. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, we should, uh, like, you know, list, uh, write that up in some way so that we can communicate that better so that when people use their referrals, that information is handy also. Um, right. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Josh, I mean, that's one of the things I wanted to bring up is that with all this crazy stuff that we're doing now, um, it's like a short light paper on that site that explains how everything works it would be really beneficial. Mm. Yeah, I think a good starting point would be doing like a, a diagram so people understand, you know, like what the different components are of the DeFi site. One's liquidity, one swaps, one's farm, right? There's three of those, you know, how they interact. I think some kind of imagery would benefit most people because a lot of what I would explain in written form would just be jargon. You know, I mean, I, I personally want to see like exactly how, you know, the custody works and the vaulting and how the UTXOs are broken up. Like that's stuff I'm really interested in that I can't necessarily explain to anybody when they ask me because I don't know. Yeah, vaults aren't really a thing anymore for the farm. And I'm talking about D5 vaults. Right, like farm vaults. I'm not talking about. Yeah, I'm talking about this, this taking vault, the divvy that's actually stored and changed right. now. That's a, yeah, that that vault. Right. Uh, well, that one, that one's great. I, that's a question for Voice. He actually really he led the entire development of that. We could write a light paper for it. I know Voice and I could collaborate on that. Um, that thing's a beast. It's honestly, it's it, it made life so easy for us to to iterate and build new things on the Ethereum side because that Oracle that he created and that custody infrastructure is so solid in the sense that if there's a fork, you know, it's, it protects against that fork. We can turn it off if there's like, we know that a major fork is happening. Like for instance, when master nodes were, were deprecated, we were able to just shut it off and, you know, custody is always cold, by the way, there's never hot custody happening there, which is awesome. Hot custody is only managed by change now. Um, so yeah, we can, we can definitely do a light paper on that and then some diagrams as well. And then, uh, that just made me think about when I'm thinking about the staking vaults, like how difficult would it be? I'm not saying right now is ideal for it, but in the future, I think it'd be great to not only have the Divi E, um, air receive rewards, but also Divi in a stable coin. Because we know we're going to get into another bear market and being tied into a stable coin might be more beneficial at that point. Mm. We could do that. I mean, we could do that pretty, pretty easily. Um, what we'd have to figure out really is just on less on voices side and on my sort of like Ethereum side is what we do is we partition the rewards. And so we would do it proportionately. So let's say like if, 50% of the liquidity is on Divi USDC and 50% is on Divi ETH. We would just slice it in half and pass the rewards to those two sides. That's not awesome to do, by the way. Yeah. I, it's just, I think, something that we should get a community vote on for sure. Because I, I could do that, like, I could do that tonight, you know, and have it done by tomorrow. But the question.
question is like does the community want rewards to go there right and so we'll put it up to a vote yeah and i certainly don't it's want it idea, now though. i certainly don't want it now but I, if we're getting to peak market in 2025 that's a good right. time to start putting liquidity into the stable point right yeah. yeah that's a good idea Great, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, we, we got one question come from Cast talking about like you know there are lots of things that we build up in the DB ecosystem and there's a huge amount that you guys can get involved in, you know, uh, lightning words, DB doors, uh, you know, DB go, etc., etc. And um, he's asking, you know, where they can actually help us expand the overall DB ecosystem. I think it's it's one for all of us. But <laughs> is there a question? Yeah, the question was like where they can help us uh, to expand the overall DB ecosystem. Um, how how the community can help to expand yeah, the DeFi ecosystem. Yeah, and really, it's, really, it's like ideas. You know, like getting everyone's creativity. Yeah. Like, you know, Mike made a good suggestion there. And one of the things that we still haven't decided on is like, what are we going to do with lottery reward, right? Like we have not minted the lottery rewards because they're not staking rewards. They're kind of a little bit different. Um, so we still have not done anything with them. They're sitting in the, in cold custody. The Oracle that we use to mint on the Ethereum side has not minted them. Um, we are thinking about like doing raffles, doing some kind of fun thing with it. Um, I'll probably work with Rob on tossing some proposals out to the community and letting people vote. Love um, it. To, yeah, and see like what what they want to do with the lottery rewards. It's up to them, you know. Like I'm just, I'm I'm thinking the best thing we do is put it to, up to the DAO, and then if people have ideas, like let's let's put them in the DAO and use that thing to, to figure out, you know, what things are <clears throat> well received and compelling to the community. But in terms of helping uh, trade activity, you know, drive trade volume to it. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not. Um, ignorant to the fact that the front end chart is not working right now. I want to redevelop it so that we're no longer relying on any Uniswap data. We're just charting. Um, also, somebody mentioned something in the comments here that I want to address, even though I don't think it's necessarily pertaining to the question. Um, someone tagged me, it was crypto polymath. They said, DiviDeFi.com swap. Uh, one divi equals 0 0.005 and then change now one divi equals 0 0.001178 uh why is divi DeFi selling eth divi for five times the price change now offers <laughs> we're actually not you just pointed out a bug it's not really a bug uh, that price is coming from polygon uh polygon divi right and because that market hasn't been super active there actually hasn't been a ton of price discovery to bring it down I'll actually add that to our agenda for the developers. We'll make sure and fix that. It actually is not selling for, for five times though. Um, if you were to do a swap, it's actually, I think right now it's at about zero, uh, point zero zero one nine or one eight. Um, so it's actually not five times higher. That's just a front end thing that it's, it's pulling data from Polygon instead of Eve, but we appreciate you pointing that out. I'll make sure that gets fixed tonight. Great, thank you, Josh. I think the the other, you know, the best way you can help us is obviously, you know, through word of mouth, you know, tell your friends and family. I think there's an element where we, we obviously need to help you to help us. And I think to Mike's point earlier and to what Josh was talking about, we'll create lots of um, material that can, you know, help you to easily explain how, you know, DB can help you through utility and to, through, the, you know, different ways of you can get the best out of DB. And that way you can easily explain and share, you know, with your friends and family, like, this is why you should look into this project. And, and I think that's the best way you can help us expand as well. And I'm sure Voice will have some uh, thoughts on this as well. Uh, oh, well. I'm not even sure if I can speak. Can I speak? <laughs> yeah, 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 we can do. I, I don't know back. what's going on with my uh, phone today. Who knows? Um, I was trying to answer uh, Josh's statement earlier and, and Mike's question, and I was sitting here chatting, and I was like, I don't think anybody can hear me. Um, anyway, uh, so Mike, to simply answer your question, it's a divvy. There is no difference between a vault, let's say, deployed upon the desktop and a vault that I created because I use the engine as it's made. 
Um, so it's going to manage the UTXOs and optimize those UTXOs exactly the way that random string has created it, which of course began with Jeff's idea on UTXO management against bloat, which also does lean into the positive um, making sure that it is optimized for work. So a vault that's the farm vault, um, that's the same kind of a vault that an individual user, obviously most users wouldn't have as much as the vault has in it. Um, it will be optimized identical. So there's no difference. I don't need to uh, fine tune any sort of optimization there. That would, that would be a negative um, if I started messing with it in any way. So when I set it up, I marry the technology purely um, to the way it's set up. Uh, yeah, which I mean that that's awesome. I get so okay. So here's something that would be perfect for a light paper. Somebody brings in a million divi over the bridge, right? It goes into the vault. Um, it's in custody there. Um, the light paper showing how the LP token uh, rewards are received based on. Um, how long somebody has actually been contributing to uh, Divi DeFi, you know, that's that's the kind of information that'd be good on the light paper. Not necessarily how vault technology works in general, but how it's directly um, being rewarded to uh, Divi DeFi participants. I'll, I'll roll that bus back right over Josh. Now we're back into Josh. <laughs> Yeah, so if you were to put a million divvy through and it went through change now, it would sit in change now's hot custody rather than the cold custody that we use for um, vaulting, for staking vault. Um, that million divvy would not necessarily go into the staking vault depending on how much divvy is in hot custody. Um, we try to keep, you know, our change now tries to keep a good amount in hot custody so that if someone wanted to come through um there's always enough liquidity there the bulk of custody is cold and we operate the staking vault for it um that is somewhere in the territory of 26 million divi i'm not sure what it is right now uh voice i don't know if i can better recently i can tell you exactly um, just give me a second so that yeah. so that that clarifies some stuff for me i'm like why is there so much divvy there that's just not being used and so um now it makes sense that you basically it's i don't know, divvy labs divvy that's sitting there which is amplifying right. the rewards for everybody 27 million yeah so there's 27 million <clears throat> that 27 million in cold custody is what's actually being staked through the staking vault that's the cold uh, I don't know how much is in hot off the top of my head, um, but typically we keep that in the low millions. That way, let's say some whale wants to come back to layer one, they can do that no problem. Um, the rewards that are generated, they um, they go through through a database, a Mongo database that was built by Voice. They've already gone through uh, like forking protections. They're they're old. There's latency on the mints, like. Once things get to my Ethereum side, by the time they get there, they're already very, like they're very well confirmed. There's no forks on it. Um, we know for certain that they're, you know, those, those staking rewards did in fact happen on the canonical chain. Um, those rewards currently are just minted and tossed entirely in the farm. We are planning to partition a piece of those rewards just to have Ethereum in the wallet because we have to do the mint, right? So we have to make sure the wallet is funded um, that does the mint so that people get their rewards. Um, and that also does the airdrop. So um, currently, I think, I don't know, we're, we're, we're trying to price it out, figure out how much of the rewards we're going to be converting to Ethereum to make sure that this thing is fully automated, rules-based, and self-funded. Um, I think we're going to do like 90, 90, 10. So 90% will go straight to the farm and then about 10% will be utilized to just keep the Ethereum, uh, reservoir funded so that everything just happens seamlessly. But your million Debbie doesn't necessarily like 
result in a, a sudden increase in staking vault rewards. It may be down the road, maybe two months later when we rebalance things and, you know, change now is like, hey, we've got a bunch, we've got 8 million different in the hot custody and we would say, all right, well, there could only be two or three there, you know? Um, and it's, it's based on, you know, it's based on rules. So like we look at average transaction size and then that determines how we replenish hot custody. So, so, so I'll, I'll and keep in mind, like from, go ahead. Yeah. One thing I'll add voice real quick. is like, you know, the, the current, the current implementation conceptualization, the whole concept of this Divi L1 and Divi L2 are two separate assets that you swap in exchange for via change now. It has to be that way because of a legal dimension for so many different reasons. It's like a year's worth of legal research on this that I'm not going to get into on this call, but I want to be really clear that we're not providing custody on behalf of the users. Change now does provide a swap custody. They do provide a service that cold custody that is taking place. We're not doing it on behalf of the user. When you go from L1 to L2, that's, you know, that's a trade that's happening. It's a swap that's happening. Um, really to some degree, that's semantics, right? I mean, you can look at it however you want. Ultimately, there's always going to be one to one at a minimum. In fact, it's over collateralized to be honest. So, um, really it's based on just, oh, there's always going to be liquidity to come back. Right. That's why people bridge, but it, it's a swap. So that, that's, and we'll, we'll add that in the light paper as well. So that's what I was going to add. That's why the current, um, the current situation that you mentioned earlier at this call about this, um, incentivization, the, uh, uh, the benefit you receive by taking whatever amount you have right now is greater than what it would be on layer one. It has to do with participation. And so as is with anything, the more people doing something, there is going to be less that goes around. As there are less people doing something, there's more to go around. So in all of these situations, it is about um, a finding a balance. It is a seesaw. If there's too many people mining Bitcoin, there's less mining going on. There's less opportunity for you to earn. If there's too many um, people selling oranges on a, on a corner, you're going to sell less oranges. So of course, then they sort of condense down and you go to selling bananas or something. Um, so this is economics. It is natural. It is a balancing act in economics. And right now, uh, for those who are participating in the farm, you could say those that balance is leaning in favor to those participants. Um, but if everybody, uh, well, that wouldn't be good for the blockchain in, in, anyway. Um, if everybody moved everything to the farm, very few people would get anything at that point. So it, it does lean back that other direction. That would also be bad for the blockchain. So it is about taking advantage. It is about balancing your participation it's like anything else you can do both and uh, and benefit from doing both right um that's what i would add oh great explanation guys um can i add one more thing to your to-do list josh which would just um because we're for whenever we have referrals roll out in the future uh easy iframe integrations that'd be awesome that way I can easily put it like on my website. Um, that's that's be cool. That's yeah. That'd be cool. Hey, all right. That's all. I have. Uh, we've been on this almost uh, 52 minutes now. I think uh, that's a, this is a good spaces. Um, if it's okay, Renu, can I just add one thing and maybe Rob will jump in also is the, yeah, is, the is the fact that um, I think we don't really have time for the whole thing, but we've been receiving questions about um is there a charge for staking i'm going to underscore this so that way we you can share it with everyone um if you want you're hearing it from the horse's mouth if any blockchain charges for staking any blockchain charges for staking that's not staking when you run a validator node whether it's on a desktop or whether you're using a raspberry pi or whether you're using your local laptop, whatever machine you're using, whether it's a $200 box or a $3,700 laptop, that's that's totally you. There, there's no cost for doing those kinds of things. 
That is a hot wallet that's running a validator node. Um, when you deploy a vault, the vaulting technology, although it does much more today, the original reason for vaulting technology, which Rob was there when we started working on this, the original reason that vaulting technology was created was for security. It was for the fact that random string um, who's extremely intelligent, a, a brain beyond imagination. Um, he was sitting there and he was running his Raspberry Pi and, and he said, well, what if somebody came in and took my Raspberry Pi? Could they get into my Raspberry Pi? Could they do these things to it? And he was studying a whole bunch of Bitcoin things, reading Bitcoin articles, talking to Bitcoin people. And uh, all of a sudden, he came upon some new technology, which we don't have time to go into. But that technology, which is not in Bitcoin, is in Divi. And he was able to make this new technology for himself originally. He created this technology so that he could put it on his Raspberry Pi. And if somebody stole his Raspberry Pi, they couldn't steal any of his funds, even if the wallet was unlocked. That's where this got started, was you could share your wallet with somebody else, and I'm not suggesting you do that, in a vault, and they could never, ever steal your funds. This is hyper-secure, hyper-cold, hyper-open. It's easy to use anywhere, and so that's the whole thing about vaults. Now, vaults can be deployed on your own. That requires you to become a nerd. That requires you to self-educate. That requires you to self-manage it. It's not something that in the support channels we generally, it's beyond the scope there, but there are channels where you can learn about these kinds of things. Rob wrote an article on it at one time, but it requires you to do things that maybe you're not comfortable with doing today, but maybe in a month you could. Now, if you use the desktop application, um, I'll use the term Vochi, uh, the Vault One Cook Cloud install does this for you. It locates a remote server that's distributed in the cloud. That's a host, that's a computer, that's a machine that will do the work for you. You create your vault locally on your computer. It takes keys that are cryptographically secure. Now, that's nerdy stuff for saying it's kind of set up like a masternode, but then I will also add it's set up nothing like a masternode because these machines do work where masternodes were passive. So um, if you're paying for staking or you're sharing proceeds of staking um, or you have to wait to, uh, to, to reclaim your funds, there's a problem with that. None of that exists in this protocol. This is pure validator nodes, mining blocks, using the coins as the multiplier for mining the hash. That was a whole bunch of nerd speak for saying it does a lot of work, but you're not paying for that. What you're paying for is the hosting, the machine that's calibrated and used and built for you so you can have a hands-off, I dare I say, um, uh, I don't want to say the word passive, but we could say it, 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 it requires almost no work on your behalf other than clicking um, add funds to your vault. And then that's managed for you. In fact, I will go as far as saying that master notes, when they went down, you would get an email message because you needed to do something on your end, like click a button to start. Vaults are so cool because they're on the blockchain where master notes were not vaults you could actually a server could melt somewhere in the cloud and as long as you had the uh, configuration details you could redeploy it somewhere else in the world within five minutes be up and running and you using the voci service wouldn't even care because you wouldn't have to click anything you wouldn't have to do anything you just keep rocking rolling forward so vaults are something really awesome anyway you don't pay for staking you're paying for a host a server in the cloud you could do that yourself um, or you can use the hands-off method and just click a couple of buttons and use Vochi through the desktop. Can I do some uh, analogies? Sure. Because um, I, I like, you know, I, I think about these fees or, or, or paying for stuff, and, and I think it's really like almost anything. So if I want to run a word processor on my computer, I can download a 
a free one <laughs> and uh, use it on my computer. But as soon as I want to do something that requires syncing two computers or syncing, you know, do something that requires the cloud, I'm now using somebody else's computers, right? There's computers, when you say the cloud, that means somebody else's computer. Right. <laughs> so, so the second I want to do something like that, almost always, uh, fees show up, right? You know, it's, it's 10 bucks a month for this, it's five bucks a month for that. And if fees don't show up, then ads show up. Like there's, somebody's making money if you're using the cloud for, if you're using the cloud one way or another. And either it's a, it's a fee on money or it's a fee on your time, one of the two. Um, and so when we say, you know, like when you're in the wallet and, and you act in, and you're using one of those vaults, you know, that that's in the cloud. It's somebody else's computer. It's, it's Divi Labs's computers or computers they use. And that fee is, is as you said, it's to pay that. But you can avoid it by, you know, running the, the, the desktop in a hot mode, staking at home. Uh, that's one way to do it. But then your computer has to be on and, you know, you got to make sure your computer's as secure as you can make it. And so there's a whole, you got to keep your updates going, all that kind of stuff. So, Maybe you want to launch a a, uh, a vault in the desktop from home and uh, in the in the software using the the Voshi stuff, um, and now you're using somebody else's computer for the validation part. Not obviously not the holding part. And as soon as you're using somebody else's computer, it's the same model. You, you're gonna you're gonna pay for that. So I, I, it's just a, an analogy to think about like the fees you pay to have the cloud services versus the blockchain fees when, that you pay when I send, when you send money out or when you send Divi to somebody. It's being able to use a tool. And so, so, so yeah. another analogy I would give for people who built websites, you may have the idea that you want a website online and you can use Weebly or you can use WordPress or you can use a hosting service like GoDaddy. You have to request a server from them. That's their computer. And Divi Labs doesn't have computers, by the way. So Divi Labs does this through a distributed partnership of data centers. So it would be similar to that. And so if you're at GoDaddy and you want to have your website there, um, you can do that, which means you do all the work on building your website or pay somebody, but you pay a monthly fee to have the website online. Now, to nerd out, you could actually do that on your home computer. You could actually have your home computer host your website. Is that efficient? No, because you're dealing with your home internet connection. Is that a is is that a fun thing to learn how to do? Absolutely. You could host on your own server, on your own computer, your website. It would be slower. It wouldn't be as fast. Um, it may have to go down because your Windows machine has to do an update. Maybe you deploy it another way, but you can do all these things very nerdy and do it yourself and have to worry about routing. What else happens though? Now you have privacy concerns because now you're sharing your external IP address to other people out there. Now you don't have to worry about that necessarily with the uh, uh, running a local validator node, but like with masternodes in particular, masternodes were a, a privacy centered focus that you would be concerned about if you were hosting it at your home because your local service, like your local um, cable internet provider, uh, may be sharing your GP, your, your, your location, your address of your IP where you live on the internet. That would not be good for privacy. So, I mean, there's benefits and negatives to both. You can save a little bit of money if you do it yourself. If you do it yourself, it costs you your time. If it goes down, it costs you your knowledge and experience to fix it. If something breaks, you have to pay to fix it. So nothing is necessarily lesser expensive. It's about you taking your time, which is your money in, in essence, your saving, but it's your time, your energy, an acquisition of knowledge to make sure it stays running. So there's benefits and negatives, right, to both services you can do things yourself or you can do them and make it crypto made easy it's totally up to you and maybe some people are confusing i don't want to make the spaces go forever but maybe people are confusing uh divi staking 
with other forms of staking that feel free oh, yeah. or low cost. Mm-hmm. So, so, so I, I'm familiar with a few, but I'm just going to mention a couple here. Like if I, and, and these are not, I'm not saying this to trash other, other chains. Other chains have philosophical approaches that are different. Um, so if we think about Cardano or we think about, uh, what's it, what's a deep, like a polygon, not polygon, um, polka dot, um, those, uh, what you do is you, you know, you put, you, you, you kind of hire validators, um, and you, you put your money towards that. Now you, you don't lose control of it, of your money. You're delegating the power of your stake to somebody else. That's the delegated proof of stake. And then um, somebody else is benefiting. Um, you're, so two things. Um, so usually they put a fee on, not always, like in Polkadot and in Cosmos, you can, you can find ones that are low fee um, and uh, low or, or even zero, you, you can. But the other part here is that your uh, you are subject to the whims and issues of the of the few um, validators that are on those projects. Um, now I work closely, like I have some uh, Cardano. Um, I work closely with somebody who who uh, uh, does the staking. Um, the equipment there is pretty meaty. It's kind of it requires some beastie. Very powerful <laughs> um, machines. Very powerful equipment. machines. Yeah, equipment. <laughs> um, and uh you know we're honest with each other and he you know he's saying like there's there's more things i can do to improve our our rewards um and and, you know he takes a small fee because he's doing all the work um and in fact i would trust people who take a small fee more than (laughs) somebody who's doing it for free uh but that's my own personal thing i think people should get paid for the work they do um so so th- that's a completely different kind of way of doing it. And then there's another, which is um, tokenized versions of staking. And I hate that staking, no offense to Josh, of course, I just dislike that DeFi staking is using the same word. I, I, it could, the, conf- the conflation makes a lot of confusion. They're yeah, just like cost. That's a terrible, yeah. that's a terrible right. way to phrase it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there are, I mean, there's all, also costs there. Um, as Josh had kind of pointed out before, but it's a completely different thing than the staking we're doing to validate blockchain. Correct. Um, so all of those things. So, so when you see free, uh, when you see free staking, like I'm on Ledger and I I, I stake with uh, uh, Polkadot and uh, Cosmos, I think on those, and I look around for the cheaper free ones and I make it go. Um, but and you don't pick one, and there isn't enough to have zero fees for all of them so you're still play, paying fees there uh even when you're not doing the staking um so in the end in order to validate a a blockchain there, there's a cost there has to be a cost if there's no cost then the blockchain has no has no security and no value there has to be cost um and how much cost and, and so forth is a big uh topic of conversation but those fees are separate than paying for fees uh to have somebody do uh, hosting for you um and keep keep software up to date for you and all that kind of stuff okay i'm, I'm done with that <laughs> <laughs> well yeah you're blue you're, abby hair i know i know exactly <laughs> we are we are so this is like this is such a long space it's like it we're in a, we're a 15 to 30 minute we're at an hour so I mean, I, I think if I'm not wrong, but like, and and uh, by the way, just for transparency, I have some Cardano. I don't know if you do or not, but anyway, um, the the point yeah, is about Cardano is is really no different than Divi. The point about Cardano though is that you're not staking; it is the pool that is staking. You distribute your coins to this pool. You don't necessarily lose custody. That is safe. But it is this pool that uses your coin weight for the voting in hopes that it'll win. It's an entirely different system than what we do. What we do is married to Satoshi. Divi is a great yeah, grandchild to to, uh, uh, of Satoshi. So when we're mining, we really mean you're running a mining node as your validator on your desktop. You're running a mining node as your vault. There is no voting going on. It is a competition, and and that requires RAM. 
it requires hard drive space. As a solo validator, you don't need to have 16 gigs of RAM, which I think is just the minimum to get started in building a pool um, for maybe it's higher now. It's 32 gigs of RAM for an Ethereum validator. These machines cost an arm and a leg. Our, our vaults, by the way, um, inexpensive today compared to the passive master nodes. No, they cost a little bit more. There's things going on. These are the, 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 this is doing work. Um, yeah, you, you have to you have to pay attention. You're going to do it yourself, or you can do it passively. I, I there I said the word. I hate that word, but you can do it with <laughs> hands off, and you just simply click. Um, what I will tell you is that the flow in version one will get smoother as we go along, just like it did with with master notes. Because I keep advising the development team, and so does Gary, and so does Neeks. So we'll see little little edges there in the flow process for deploying your vaults get easier and easier and easier. But as always, if you ever want to learn this yourself, I think we'll we'll probably kill this space soon. Um, I'm happy to help you. And I know Rob has written articles on this long, 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 about two years ago, he wrote an article on this. Um, I've set up thousands of vaults on my own. Um, and so I can actually walk you through doing it. But I have to be honest with you. It's you doing it. If, if you and I sit down for an hour, I can teach you how to do it. But what I can't teach you is how to manage a Linux node. I can't, I, I can share with you a little bit about that, but you're going to have to self-educate. And then you're going to have to allocate your own node, which has, you know, four gigabytes of RAM on it. You're going to set that up in the cloud and you're going to do all this kind of stuff. And, and I can walk you through all of that. Um, but when it goes down, I can only guide you, but you're going to have to figure out how to fix it. And that means we will all share together, but it's all you. It's nobody else is going to touch your node. Um, yeah, it's, it's all you doing it. It's fun to do. If you ever want to know how I'm happy to help. Well, one last thing on that is, is I started it nothing. Um, seriously, like I didn't know how to program. Uh, I didn't understand blockchain. Like this is where, when it came to the project, it had zero, I guess I understood this, the idea of blockchain, but actually getting down into the nitty, I didn't learn, I knew nothing. Um, and it's been years, um, but really the, the main knowledge of learning how to program, learning to do Linux, learning to start up these nodes, building a vault, that was all step by step over maybe a year. And it wasn't my whole time. I got other things to do. So, you know, I, I truly do believe that if, you know, this is interesting and you really want to get in there, uh, then, you know, the, the path is open and it's totally understandable if you don't. <laughs> so. Well, I, I, I will stress, and most of you, because you've spoken with me before, may not believe me, but I was born with a learning disability. Um, and that's, I, I can speak well. I can speak. That's why I'm called the voice. It's, it was given to me by another crypto community. I'm not stupid, um, but I cannot learn the same way many people learn. I cannot read and learn. I cannot even sit still, believe it or not, for more than 15 minutes. Right now, I'm kicking my feet in my chair. We've been on this call for an hour. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that um, if an adult like me can learn this, anyone can learn this. And I, I will tell you, and this is not uh, doxing anyone, both uh, Rob and I aren't, aren't youthful kids anymore. Um, we are older. Yeah. We've been through many generations in our life. So it doesn't matter if you're, you're 25 or if you're 65 learning this, I'm telling you, you can learn it. The only thing that I've got on you is I started my self-education journey over a decade ago and it intensified eight years ago. The other thing would be is that I had wonderful guys, wonderful guys sharing with me freely. I mean, I could ask all sorts of dumb questions and they would share with me books. They would share with me um, in tutorials and they did it almost all by voice, although some of them did it by text. Um, but they would they would get on a chat with me and I could ask questions um, and then they would help me and then I would experiment on my own. Uh, I just want to express and then stress I'm not an influencer and nor do I ins uh, aspire to become one. Um, so everything I do is about learning and sharing and it's a blessing for me to share and be on, on the journey you're on 
um, and see you go through that same learning process. It is it is a joy for me when when people I share with then share for others because I think that's priceless. And that's why I've never charged for a concierge. I've never charged for helping people recover their assets. I've never charged for people, you know, for any of these kinds of things because these really these three to five these three to five people who shared with me many many years ago they spent months and and in some cases years and some of them are are dear friends today they've never charged me a dime never charged me a dime for helping people and so i just i just return the same to the community so if i can learn it you can learn it it's just about time that's all it is Absolutely, and we really appreciate that voice. I think you know, as as Davy as well, we always try to take you on that journey with us and try and share that knowledge and, and try and help you understand exactly what you're getting into, what you are connecting with, so you really understand all of it. And you know, that's why we always try to do the spaces and you know, whenever you can, put your hands up, ask any questions. Uh, you know, even just message us later, and we'll get back to you. So anything you want to know, we're here to help you guys. happily. I think we've also done a record spaces today, <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes. No, I think an hour and 30. I appreciate Josh being here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy Josh came and, and uh, talked a lot about DeFi. Um, yeah. I have been I am a, I have been resistant to make the jump, but I, I believe I'm going to be making the jump now. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm going to follow. So, I'm going to ask um, Rob for advice then. I'm going to sit there and say, "What did you do?" <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and we really appreciate all of you guys sticking around as well. I see like a lot of you have stayed on uh, for the full time, so we really appreciate that too. Great things coming. And absolutely, and we hope to see you all again next week. Have wonderful weekends, and thanks again. Adios. 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 Bye.